HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, we have the latest Hiller Sports update, highlights from the annual Hopkinton Fire Department open house, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, the Board of Selectmen confirmed two employee appointments by the town manager. At this week's Board of Selectmen meeting, Selectmen confirmed two town manager appointments one appointment was for the Senior Accounting Manager Town Accountant position, and the other was for the Procurement and Grants Manager position. And firstly, I am presenting uh, David Nalchajian uh, as the recommended uh, candidate for the Finance, uh, for, for the Town Accountant, Accounting Manager position. Okay. Um, I, I should say that in my 30 years working in public service. Uh, this is the first time I have sat in a room um, with two candidates that we're presenting who both have uh, uh, CPAs. Uh, and, 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 and I believe looking around, seeing the presence of our finance team here, this may be the largest footprint of town accountants or finance people I've ever been around uh, here in Hopkinton. Congratulations, Dave. But anyway, Bill, thank you very much for, for coming. Thank you for considering us. Thank um, you. It's, thank a, you it's, a position, it's a position that um, we, we really want to fill. Um, you know, the, the, the one thing I remember about Munis is when we first implemented it, it was, it was difficult, people coming up to speed, but it fleshed out a lot of accounts. We found money when we went, went to it. That's always so it was, good. It was a pain in the neck, but then all of a sudden, Norman was finding money left and right to use for other stuff. So I think we finished. I hope he that. keeps that practice up. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> but no, really, thank you. This uh, just you, you work for some some great communities. Uh, I, I used I worked at uh, Triton Regional. Oh, uh, did you really? Forty yeah. years ago, so I, I know West Newbury and uh, Harleston, Harvard. That's great. So really, thank you very much for uh, for considering us. We really uh, really wanted to fill this position. Thank you. I am honored and humbled to introduce Benjamin Sweeney uh, as the town's procurement and grants manager. Uh, this is a position that was recently created and funded through the FY19 uh, budget process, and it needs to be said. It needs to be said. His grandfather was the town's treasurer several years ago. Oh, all right. He yeah. is, yes, his grandfather. It also needs to be said, he is a fine graduate of Hopkinton High School. All right. Ben, what year did you graduate Hopkinton? 2003. 2003. All right. Where'd you go to school after that? Assumption College. All right. Uh, so welcome aboard, assuming the vote goes your way. Uh, it's you. always nice to see people from town come back and work in town. Um, you know, like like uh, Mr. Hurst said, a uh, Hopkins high grad coming back to work at the town hall is, is a pretty good thing. We like to see stuff like that happen. Um, so, and as Mr. Catino said, there's so much money out there in, in, uh, in grants and procurement uh, to have someone come in with your experience and your energy you know, with all the, um, you know, the, the good references that you got. Uh, it sounds like you're gonna hit the ground running and uh, start making money for the town. That's our goal to hire you is to make money for us. The town manager's appointment of Benjamin Sweeney as the procurement and grants manager. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any other comments? <laughs> Were that? All right. Um, all right. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. 
This past weekend, the annual Hopkinton Fire Department open house took place. HCAM's Mike Terosian was on the scene. This past Sunday, the Hopkinton Fire Department hosted their annual open house. The event is hosted as part of National Fire Prevention Month and helps teach about the everyday duties of the fire department. So we're just trying to teach children if a fire alarm goes off in their house, what they want to do is stay nice and low, crawl low under the smoke, and also what to do if they get fire on them. So stop, drop, cover, and roll. We're just trying to teach the basics. The afternoon featured plenty of lesson learning activities for the kids, including rides in the fire truck. Here we go, guys. How are we doing today? Everybody doing good? Yeah? What's your name, pal? You don't know! <laughs> Today's our uh, annual open house, Mike. It's a great day. We got a great crowd. Everything's looking good. And what are you doing? What are you doing today? I am going to be assigned to giving rise in a new rescue. So when people are hurt, we put them on the cot, we take them to the hospital. On the way to the hospital, we, we help them and uh, we get better. Today we're talking about stuff in the back of the ambulance, uh, just to introduce the kids to see what an ambulance is like and that it's uh, not as scary as you might think. And we take it to the hospital and uh, part of what we do here in Hopkinton is the ambulance doesn't only bring it to the hospital, we're bringing the hospital to you. This is a demonstration of rural water supply. What we would do, we would have to do if you did not have a fire hydrant in your neighborhood, where the tanker would show up, put down the portable tank, empty the water into the tank, and then another truck would draft the water out of it. This would be the heaviest of the three. You ever see those climb for life stair yeah. races? Yeah. You ever do one? Oh yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Not too bad. No, it's holding holding strap. Are you holding it for me? Yeah, pull these straps down and tighten it right up. Look at all the stuff in here. Oh my God. This is John D's mother. Now you got it. Wow, that's crazy. Alright. When you do the waist belt, it puts most of the weight on your waist instead of your shoulders. That so makes a huge difference. Sparky the fire dog was on the scene. Without Scotty, Scotty, how you doing today? Very great. You doing a fire? You yeah. A fire truck ride? Not yet. Not yet. So, how about did you get a slice of pizza? Yeah. Uh, maybe two slices. Maybe. <laughs> and of course, there was plenty of pizza to go around. <laughs> Come on, boys. See what We've you got like. some nice appreciation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Appreciate you thinking of us. We'll find a good spot for this in the station, all right? Thank you. All right. Today is talking about fire safety, fire prevention. It's not all about responding to emergencies. So we're trying to educate the uh, families and kids about the equipment we have. 
um, some of the safety precautions they can do. And uh, we have an outstanding show today. I bet you we have 400 people through already. Sure. What kind of things could uh, people expect to see here? Well, we're demonstrating equipment. We have a lot of medical equipment that's out there. They're showing our uh, fire equipment, extrication, technical rescue, all that. We're doing a stop, drop, and roll for the kids so they recognize how to uh, react to a smoke alarm, how to get out of a bedroom, stay low. If they have a problem, they stop, drop, and roll, and uh, how to get out of the house safely to a meeting area. Excellent. Have a plan. That's what we uh, try to get everybody to say, have a plan. And, uh, uh, and what, what's with the big line? We have a lot of people here today. There's no Patriots game and no Red Sox game during open house. That That's a key. <laughs> and, and what's the other uh, fun stuff that is going on over here? Right now, we just do fire truck rides for the kids. We're just trying to show them some of the equipment we have. And uh, for the real youngsters that aren't quite at that learning age yet, they really appreciate a ride in the fire truck. Still to come on HCAM News, the latest Hiller sports update, including senior night highlights, and Matt Clark has our HCAM insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. Help your community to collect food for the project just because Hopkinton Food Pantry the scouting for food drive. Place food items for donation in plastic bags near your mailbox by 10 a.m. on Saturday. Some items the food pantry is in most need of include gift cards, canned meats, gluten-free foods, baking items, paper and cleaning products, and toiletries. If you wish to donate but don't have enough time to shop, you can donate online. Thank you for helping our local residents in need. This week on Hopkins and Coffee Break, Patricia Carney and Darlene get us all up to date on the happy ground. I mean, I mean, there's some basic things too that if you know, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, know, I, mean, I know. It is a different I mean, lifestyle. If you, look, if you look at this week alone, I mean, the town lost two integral people in town. Bob Lavoy, he was 91, yeah. and his health had been failing. But he's literally an American hero and a hero in town, and he was the last surviving Iwo Jima survivor wow. from Hopkinton. Welcome back to HCAM News. It has been another successful fall sports season for the Hopkinton Hillers. With just about every team on pace or already clinching a playoff spot, here's a look at the latest Hiller sports update, including senior night highlights. Hopkinton Hillers field hockey played the very first game on the new turf fields versus Westwood. Prior to the game, the Hillers celebrated senior night and celebrated the four seniors on this year's roster. Yeah, Hillers with a huge opportunity here. Waters is to the left. Out in front, it's Cammy McDonald. She'll go to, it's not McDonald, it's McIntyre. McIntyre puts it in! Tie game! The game was a great battle between two very good TVL teams. Alyssa McIntyre had the only Hiller's goal, and the game ended in a 1-1 draw. The playoff-bound Hillers improved to eight wins, five losses, two ties, and have 18 points on the season. The very next night, Hillers Girls Soccer played their first game on the new Hopkinton High School turf versus Dover Sherborne. They also celebrated senior night. This year's team features five seniors.
Hartman and Bowden Mix. And a shot here, Delaney Mick, wide open net, and that's a goal! Delaney Mick taking advantage of a wide open net, and it's 1-0 Hillers. The Raiders are hoping for a shot there, but well defended by the Hillers. Over the goalkeeper. Oh boy, there's a shot! Open net again, and a goal! Allison Bird! Takes advantage of a mistake by the goalkeeper. Doyle put it right back towards Bird. Left Bird with a wide open net. And it's two to nothing Hillers. The Hillers defense was excellent and they compiled two first half goals. Hopkinton defeated Dover Sherborne two to nothing. The playoff found Hillers improved to eight wins, three losses and four ties. The Lady Hillers have 20 points overall. The Hopkinton Historic District Commission hosted their first public forum regarding expanding the town's historic district. Here's a look. The Hopkinton Historic District Commission held a public forum to talk about potential expansion of the historic district. Chair Amy Ritterbush explained the process. District, we're just gathering feedback. Um, we might do a, try to do a smaller expansion than what we originally proposed, depending on what people say. We could also um, consider adjusting these things to be exempt from review, if that's the feedback we get from people. You know, for example, if everybody from A Street really wants to be in the district, but everybody from B Street doesn't, we could always just say, okay, we'll, we'll just take A Street. We don't need to do B Street if people don't want it. So we really appreciate everyone's feedback, and we're going to adjust accordingly. We're also working on creating design guidelines for the district about what would be allowed and, and not allowed by guidelines. I think that would make people more comfortable with being in the district if we knew exactly what the expectation or more, more closely what the expectation would be. One of the questions regarded funding for homes located in the historic district. Yeah. But the home actually is 100 years or more. And, and uh, they've had for us sales I know for a long time, but if somebody wanted to knock it down and put up a new house, this would keep them from doing that. And I'm wondering if, if there would be funding involved to help for, to preserve the, these, because to give someone an incentive to uh, uh, keep them the way they are. So, you know, I don't think there is funding available for private homes. If it's a public building like Center School, we can Sometimes there's funding if, if the property is on the National Register of Historic Places, but that's not what this is. Um, that's a whole different process. That's oh, okay. Well, I don't think that's going to be on the Historic Register. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, 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 if we include, include B Street in the, in the uh, Historic District, it would kind of tie the hands of whoever wanted uh, yeah. to change something there. So there's definitely pros and cons. Um, so we do understand that sometimes homes are just beyond saving, that they might be in really rough shape and might have to come down, but we would at least, they would at least become before us for design review so that whatever is built in its place would kind of fit in with the streetscape. But, um, but right, sometimes something's kind of horrible, you know, flood or fire, or like there was one on Street and the roof was caved in in the back and it couldn't be saved. But right now, when that happens, um, an older home that's not in the district, um, is demolished. There's no design review process for a private home, so just they can build whatever they want. It's well, nice. It's nice. It's awesome. You know, whatever. But they do have to go before the historical commission, um, but that just will institute a six-month delay, um, and then after that, there's not much that can happen. Right. 
Another question asked about the process of routine maintenance. Having your roof redone, shutters, um, gutters replaced, is that considered routine or would that need to be approved? So I think gutters do come before us, um, but if it's the same type as existing, we would probably just allow it without even a hearing, just a regular meeting. And only if they're visible from the street. Yeah, if it's visible from the street. And the same thing, if the roof is the same material and color, we would just say, we would just usually allow it. So do you have some guidelines that, that explain what routine maintenance is? I might think it's routine, but you know, what gutters been in the all of a sudden be fine or whatever happened, not knowing that oops. So I think that's gonna be a big part of this process is getting our written design guidelines so people can read them and be comfortable with them or not. You can view the whole public forum on our website, hcam.tv. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, October 19th at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat about recent happenings in town on a brand new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. Yeah. And here we have an election coming up in a couple of weeks, and I, I shake my head going, Please. Right. It, your vote matters. Your voice matters. Well, I think people are fired up. I mean, on either side of the debates, and goodness knows they've been hotly debated everything. On Monday, October 22nd at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers celebrate senior night before their match against the Westwood Wolverines on HCAM Ed. On Wednesday, October 24th at 7 p.m., MassDOT holds a public forum to discuss the upcoming improvements to the town highways on a brand new HCAM TV special. And on Friday, October 26th at 9 p.m., Cheryl Peralt sits down with HMS English teacher Mary Ellen Grady on a new episode of Meet Your Neighbor. You know, I ask, please give me the strength to, to be kind with every, every movement I have, mm -hmm. every word I speak, every eye contact I make. So I think that's, like, it's funny that I became a teacher, but maybe not so funny, you know. And also on HCAM Ed, the girls' soccer versus Dover Sherbin and the girls' field hockey versus Westwood games will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the new Hopkinton community calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. color. Welcome to Hopkinton's Attic. A new show on HCAM created by Kathleen Color and presented by the Hopkinton Historical Society talks about some historical artifacts found in Hopkinton. On the show, Kathleen Color talks with the hardworking volunteers at the Historical Society to find out more about Hopkinton history. And anywhere from five to 6,000 years old. And Linda said, do you think that these are, she asked Dr. Johnson, do you think that these are from the Nipmucks, which is a, obviously a tribe that many of us are familiar with in this area. The first episode discusses the Cheney collection. Here's a look. 
Today we'll find out how one Hopkinton farmer dug up the dirt and led us to discover residents who were here 7,000 years ago. And we'll hear about modern day sleuths Ron Yankee and Linda Connolly and their efforts to preserve a collection of artifacts for our town's study and enjoyment. Our story begins with farmer Harry Cheney, who worked his 126 acre farm in the Bear Hill area of Hopkinton over 100 years ago, along what we know today as School Street. Having moved to Hopkinton from Milford to farm, Cheney found many Native American tools, cutting edges, knife points, tips and axes as he worked his land, often finding several artifacts in the same field. Cheney's collection grew and was passed on to his son Henry, who operated an amateur museum that was noticed in its day. Very remarkable, unusual, and self-educated, self-taught family. Um, he's principally remembered now for his archaeological work and for his collecting also of, of, um, of rocks, so work with geology. But in the 20s and the 30s, he collected all types of Native American artifacts, and he had a little museum in Woodville. Henry's sons, Ora, William, and Curtis, took on the museum next, with Ora eventually presiding over the collection and often selling and trading off parts of it until he died in 1991. After Ora died, the gradual decline of the property accelerated. In 2015, the Hopkinton Historical Commission met to discuss the demolition of the original cottage, by now deemed unstable, and news articles covered the crumbling of the original farmhouse and surrounding buildings. The Cheney estate gave to the Hopkinton Historical Society what remained of Ora's collection of artifacts and volunteers stepped in to secure the collection. The effort was led by Hopkinton Historical Society member Ron Yankee. 